This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Palette, and I'm reading some spin pasta stuff. Guilty Gears? They were going to continue our look at My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Goodwill, DVD. Where we left off, shit all over the bed. Just the bed is covered, all kinds of dookie. Little little bit of uh, late night mud butt. Um, we've had school shootings in in uh, the world of Equestria, and that's that's where we're picking up from. Uh, I don't. I, I'm I'm not optimistic that we're going to see anything else turn around here. That there's going to be some magical <laughs> thing to to save this story. But I think that we have had plenty to discuss so far. So let's get right back into it. The screen faded back to a bridge in the ever-free forest. There were no sides on it, so no one could fall off the side. So one could fall off the side. Okay. Um, I think what they're trying to say is that there were no handrails? Hove rails. Hove rails. That's what I meant to say. I saw something at the top right corner, but couldn't make it out. Uh, I guess on the top right corner of the screen, geographically is what they mean. So I pause the DVD and zoom in. Without any editing, I could clearly see the corpse of Zakora hanging from one of the trees. Oh my god. I read ahead. Uh, Zakora is a, um, zebra, as the British would say. She's a zebra. Uh, it was clear, she was clearly lynched in a style similar to the actions done by the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Uh, school shootings, racism, lynching. What sick bastard got the idea to write this distorted distortion of a child's cartoon? I zoom back out and continued playing. So again, we're getting really awkward phrasing here, like, uh, in the action, like, th- the mentioning of the Ku Klux Klan. Like, yeah, anyone who's made it through middle school? I think is when they start teaching you about this stuff, knows about the Ku Klux Klan and, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we know that they do lynchings. You don't need to mention that explicitly. So also, because she's a zebra, it's like implied that she's from Africa. She kind of has that African accent, so she's black. That's why they're doing that. Okay. Fluttershy came rolling in a chair with cement blocks strapped to it. Who else was tied to it besides Rarity? I got a deep pit of sickness in my stomach. I knew what Fluttershy would do now. This time, Rarity was still alive, but already had the carving on her flank. A Philly killer. Okay. So Rarity is being accused of killing Philly? Oh, abortion. Okay. (laughs) Abortion. Lovely. Uh, They're accusing Rarity of getting an abortion at some point because the fans think that Rarity is a slut. Uh, she was clearly distressed and tried screaming, but she was bound and gagged so no sound would come out. Well, you'd still have sound coming out if you're gagged. Um, Fluttershy removed the gag, ra- uh, giving Rarity a chance to beg for her life. Please, don't do this, Fluttershy, Rarity begged. Um, Fluttershy ignored her. The lonely mare strikes with absolute rage. This was another familiar quote used by Dylan Claybold from a poem he had written, albeit ponified. Uh, well, yeah, there you go. Congratulations. Uh, no, 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 Rarity begged. I'm sorry for whatever I did to you. Please don't do this. Rarity was crying tears of desperation, but Fluttershy did not care. She pushed the chair off the bridge, uh, dragging Rarity into the river as she screamed bloody murder as rarities want to do. Rarities sank into the de- deep depths of the river, never to be heard from again. I am the law. If you don't like it, you die. Uh, Fluttershy uttered in an evil male voice, shown earlier, as you show a voice, not, you know, let someone hear it. Um, except calmer, as she had, as she stared into the river to watch Rarity drown. She then walked over to the corpse of Zakora. It was clear now that Fluttershy lynched her. Oh, okay, well, okay, this is the story, not me. Uh, you nigger, hard R, oof, lovely. Um, it was not her normal voice, uh, or the evil teen male voice from earlier, but rather the voice of a southern middle-aged man. Okay, it also sounded like it was cut off, as if there was 
supposed to be more said, I recognized the voice as Bob Ewell from the 1962 film To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, why are you so familiar with that f- film? That's a weird pool. Um, so Fluttershy is a murderer and racist now? Who made this sick film? Okay, so now is a good time uh, to break this down and ask how much of the lost episode should be described in your lost episode creepypasta that you shouldn't write because you shouldn't write a lost episode creepypasta. Um, I say as I'm working on one with someone, um, those are intensely problematic to make in that you will get into a lot of problems trying to make them. There are so many pitfalls on trying to make a lost episodes thing uh, that is realistic, that bears fruit, that's doing something new and interesting. And so, um, I think that if you're going, if you're really committed to the idea, you shouldn't have all of your story be the lost episode. The beginning of the story was actually rather promising because it was grounding us to our narrator, telling us about their life, telling about, telling us about where they grew up, um, their surroundings, their home life. You know, all of these kinds of things are important to know to establish where this story is going. But then we get this dramatic shift where he goes into uh, the Goodwill for a short stint and gets the DVD, and now the majority of the story has been what's happening on the DVD. And we're not really getting um, a whole lot of feedback on on how they're reacting to this. It's just, they'll do something that's like, something racist happened. Wow, that was racist. Then something brutal happened. Wow, that was brutal. And it's a lot of ways of telling us how to feel rather than giving us the agency to feel how we want to feel and letting our mind wander and interpret things. So I wrote, rewrote, you know, Dead Bar and everything. And that portion of the story where we're actually talking about what happens with Dead Bar is a rather short, you know, in in the grand scheme of things, uh, segment compared to the rest of the story that explains where the tape came from and in all of the other stuff surrounding the story. Um, we're not getting the culture at the MLP studios or whatever. None of that. This is all trying to force in social ills into the story. And now it's not just the school shootings and the violence and the guns and all of these kind of controversial issues. Now we're bringing racism into it. And what's more, not, um, what's the term I should use? Contemporary racism. We're talking about dyed in the wool, um, Mississippi burning racism that it's, it's like an, an attempt at gravity that does uh, gravity to the story that doesn't make any sense. Um, especially when we haven't seen anything else up to this point. Is there going to be a third social ill? Is this the rule of threes where we're going to get something else? Um, and maybe we're seeing that now with abortion possibly being brought in. I think that's how I'm interpreting the rarity uh, Philly killer thing, like baby killer. We'll see. But we should probably press on, because, man, there's so much of this to get through. The show cut to Twilight Sparkle's house. Some sinister-sounding music started playing. I knew this song as it played for my... as I played it in my junior high... in the junior year of my high school band. I was one of the... it was one of the movements of... Joan, Jonah Dimaggi's Lord of the Rings Symphony. I believe this part was Journey to the Darkness. I could be wrong. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, the camera zoomed into the window and then jumped to Twilight Sparkle's bed. She and Spike were screwing each other. They were just screwing each other over here. And deep down in my heart, I'm always going to want you two to screw. Um... If you get where that's from, then uh, cookie for you, I guess. She and Spike were screwing each other, or was Spike spiking her? Spike was humping the hell out of Twilight, clearly getting it in. <laughs> I'm just imagining the uh, that sex scene from um, uh, The Room, but instead it's Twilight and uh, Spike. He was pumping, and bodily fluids were flying everywhere. Is this supposed to be comedic? Because it's genuinely funny. Both were moaning and screaming as they pleasured each other. The sinister music was getting louder and more suspenseful. I knew something horrible would happen. 
both of them eventually came by the action by the actions they had performed were clearly all oh, but the cl- actions they perform were clearly not enough uh, i was about sickened with all i had seen i didn't know how it could get worse so that's a weird perspective seeing people brutally murdered and acts of racism and the n-word with the hard r all of that is sickening but it's getting worse cuz sex i guess um it did spike was laying upon twilight's bed uh clearly in postcoital pleasure bliss yeah uh that's that's my addition twilight climbed on top of him and started to defecate on his chest <laughs> Started to defecate on his chest. Oh my lord. She was, <laughs> she was performing a Steve Lynn Cleaver. Steve Lynn, S- Cleveland Steamer. Oh man. I just about threw up. I knew my parents, if my parents were to walk in here, they would kill me for being a brony. No, they would kill me. So ashamed at what I had watched, I continued watching in my hopes that it would stop. <laughs> or you could just turn off the DVD. It didn't. After she was done, she got up in front of Spike, he started to urinate, and she got the steady flow of yellow in her mouth. I was done with this. I could not take this anymore. I pressed the eject button on my di- Okay, genuine question here. Taking a dookie on someone's chest, pretty extreme. Um, urinating into someone's mouth, not more extreme. Why, that's the thing that makes you press the eject button? As opposed to the dookie on the chest, uh, this clip just kept playing. Uh, who else, uh, who has a present for Spikey Wikey? Spike shouted after he finished urinating. <laughs> How about a Cosby sweater? Twilight replied. Oh my god. Uh, holy shit. Did this go from a twisted horror film to a horribly made shock porno? Shock porno. Shock porno. I, Oh man, I'm curious now. I'm gonna type that into Bing. This is the sound of me figuring out what a sh- what comes up when I type in shock porno. Um, searching, taking that Bing time to search up. Come on, matureshock.com. Uh, are there people getting electrocuted? Cause that'd be cool. No. Oh, yep, yep. Electroshock videos. Yep. Who's not into that? Um. <laughs> oh boy, guys. Uh, Twilight made herself vomit on Spike's chest. It was clear she had eaten a bunch of fruity cereal. <laughs> She's eaten those fruity pebbles from John Cena. Uh, the mess of vomit had multiple muted colors mixed in with it, the, the nasty color of bile. I came even closer to throwing up. I had seen some nasty shit before. My friends got me to look up Two Girls, One Cup, and Lemon Party, and Goat Sea, and... Even three guys, one hammer. But this was more sickening than anything that they had me watch. Um, I am, I am so jaded to this. It's just like, it's not, if it's, if it's supposed to shock you, then you have to describe it in such a detail that it's unpleasant for you to write it as well. And this person is too much of a coward to do that. Uh, so, you know, you need to, like, talk about every single detail of what the poop looked like and how it was, you know, but they're not doing that. Uh, the music was built, like, it's, it's gross, but it's, it's not shocking, right? You know what I mean? I was actually looking forward to seeing the two of them die. I hated Twilight now. Why? I wanted that whore to die. Why? What? What? This is not, What? This stuff right here makes me think that it's 100% real, that there's, this isn't trolling, this is real, this is just a person, like a weird, socially inept person who hates the fictional character Twilight Sparkle. You know what I mean? That's how this is reading. Now I wanted, I wanted that whore to die. The scene changed to what looked like a hunting scope. It was looking through the window and was clearly aiming for Spike when the shooter got a lock on Spike. So, is our, our is our narrator getting cucked by Spike, who has the ability to have sex with Twilight, because he too is a fictional character, and that's where the jealousy is coming in, and he's mad at Twilight for being a whore? What is the deal here? Uh, the shooter pulled the trigger. The shooter took off the scope, and the camera changed to reveal it was Fluttershy, who would have guessed. She, w- uh, she grinned that evil grin of hers. One down, one to go. 
Uh, the scene went back to Twilight's bed. Spike's head had been taken, uh, had taken the shot and blood and brain matter splattered all over the wall and Twilight herself. She stood in shock and just stared in horror as she watched Spike's head, uh, Spike bleed. Who did this? Twilight screamed in horror. Fluttershy walked, uh, in the front door of Twilight's house. Fluttershy, someone just killed Spike. Get some help. Twilight uh, shouted at her. Fluttershy ignored. She walked towards the bed. She pulled out a knife. Fluttershy, what are you doing? Twilight asked as she backed towards the wall. Okay, so what we're getting here is that Fluttershy, with, through, through a long-range scope, shoots Spike and then immediately just teleports to, to the door and is walking into her house. Okay, you didn't notice, but I took a significant break there because, like, this is just... If I was, like, talking about this story with other people, I would be able to power through this. But, man, this story is really fucking killing me, guys. Uh, and I, and I want to get this out there, you know, tomorrow for you guys or today for you. And, and so I'm, I'm powering through. I'm feeling it. It's power up. At the climax of the music, Fluttershy started stabbing the daylights out of Twilight Sparkle. Twilight screamed bloody murder. She hacked everywhere until Twilight's lungs filled with blood. It, was it showing an internal shot of her blood, of her lungs filling with blood? She stopped breathing and her heart stopped. Again, or is this like one of those cutaway things where it's showing inside of her body? Sorry, I had a burp there. She was dead, but Fluttershy just kept stabbing. Fluttershy, that kills people. Um, she counted up to 150 times before she stopped stabbing. I have a very good sense of, uh, very good sense of numbers, and was able to remember each dab, even when I was play, uh, paying attention to the blood and gore. Um, I'm not suggesting this as a insult or something, but maybe there is some form of autism spectrum disorder at play with our author and narrator, maybe both, if we're going to be charitable. Uh, the idea that they would be able to count the number of times that they were stabbed precisely, um, is the kind of ability that you would expect someone who has autism spectrum disorder to be able to do um, certain kinds of autism. Um, she took the knife and started carving at Twilight Sparkle's thigh. By the time she finished carving, her thigh read pedo whore. Um, I then saw Fluttershy do something I had never seen her do before. She stuck her hoof in the blood puddle and smeared a smiley face upon th this person's really a, a, a fan of the phrase upon the wall by twilight's bed i recognized the picture it was an exact match of the insignia of red john from the mentalist from the mentalist gonna google what that is because that sounds familiar ah according to bing it's a tv show uh, about a crime drama kind of thing all right this person keeps referencing, it keeps referencing crime dramas and, you know, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, the movie, not the book, of course, uh, things along those lines. It's bringing up all these other things, um, to be evocative of those things, but it's not imbuing the story with those things itself. So The Mentalist is, I don't know if it's a good or a bad show, but it's this crime drama, but there's no crime drama here. So what's the point? You know, To Kill a Mockingbird has the the racial politics of that time and era that Harper Lee was living through, but this is just showing a lynching, which isn't the full context of that, and doesn't show the full breadth and depth of that situation, and why that book and, and movie are so important. Um, you know, we can go down the list of all the things that have been referenced, but it's not showing the full insanity and in, in, in uh, and complexity of these situations, you know. I wanted to see Twilight dead, but not like that. Why, 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 narrator, are you saying that? Elaborate on what you're saying here. I came to the conclusion that it was not Lauren Faust who made this. I figured out that it was just some deranged psychopath who had learned to animate just like Faust. It's Shadow Faust. Um, I was now worried for her. Was he stalking her? Would we lose an animation genius 
Uh, Lauren Faust is not an animation genius. I don't know where you would get that idea. Lauren Faust, perfectly talented person, but animation isn't what people love her for. <laughs> they they love her for what she did to the My Little Pony franchise, and her contribution was not animation. Um, she's uh, uh, the screen faded to bla- out to black. I knew this was not a real episode. It had already run for four, uh, 35 minutes. When it faded back, the scene was that of the Crystal Empire. Oh, the Crystal Empire. <sighs> Everyone loves the Crystal Empire. And Crystal Ponies. What could be done now about this uh, to make this episode even scarier? The camera changed to a theater. Uh, Princess Cadence and Prince Shining Armor were on the top balcony. They were chatting and viewing the performance of Handel's Messiah. They seemed to really be enjoying it. Again, we have the mention of another property, Handel's Messiah, uh, but we're not... It, it's if, if you're going to evoke something, and you can evoke things without explaining um, necessarily what they are or capturing all of it, just sampling something to get someone in that headspace, that's completely understandable. But this is specifically mentioning works that are where where their beautiful qualities are not being exemplified by this story, if that makes any sense. So if I were talking about like, okay, here's a story where one time uh, my cousins and I were having a late night golden eye fest where we kept playing golden eye all all night and we were up real late we were up till 12 a.m it turned into the next and you're like you're doing that to evoke nostalgia and then you're like and then we heard something outside in the backyard and and we went to investigate and and you know then the story's actual horror goes somewhere else that's fine because you're using golden eye the, the video game not as its beautiful qualities itself but as an evocative evocative piece to remind you of nostalgia, to remind you of a different time, that's not what's going on here. We're doing these things to just, like, say, hey, isn't Handel's Messiah cool? Hey, aren't all these serial killers cool? Uh, Hey, isn't the mentalist cool? All of this kind of stuff. And that's something you want to be wary of. Why are you making these references? Are they because you are trying to adopt those qualities? Um, if so, are you adopting those qualities? And, you know, what, what purpose does it serve? It could serve a number of purposes, but this one is a decidedly not Ashcan one, and even if it was, it's not doing so. Um, e- even regardless of that, it's not doing it in a very effective manner, I don't think. The camera changed viewing to the back of the stage behind the curtains where Fluttershy stood. Waiting for the right chance to strike, she pulled out a remote with an evil grin on her face. She pushed the button, and a loud explosion was heard. The people in the theater panicked. Everyone screamed bloody murder. It was shown that the balcony cadence in shining armor was viewing the performance from had blown up, and that the two rulers were now splattered to the wall, dead. Fluttershy jumped out from behind the curtain, and said, it was me, it was me, Austin, it was me all along, uh, and started shooting, like before, at the school uh, schoolhouse. She shot everyone, killing everyone in sight. She, w- no, 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 story. Shooting every pony in sight. She would not kill everyone, no, every pony. Should say every pony, uh, though, like at the schoolhouse. Um, a group of police officers ran from behind her and tackled her. They successfully subdued her and arrested, arrested her for numerous counts of murder. Uh, I'm trying to remember, like, how how did she, like, pull off this murder in Equestria and then just get free reign to get on the train to go to the Crystal Empire? Or is the Crystal Empire... Yeah, the Crystal Empire is, like, through a portal or something? I can't remember. Um, but she put, uh, she put up very little fight as they carried her away. But rather, she gave an extremely evil-looking grin. Like, she did not care. No, I think she did care. I think she enjoyed it. Because in this story, she's a psychopath. So, uh. This grin was no ordinary grin, but very similar to that of the legendary Smile Dog. 
she had killed over 250, had over 250 kills in her whole rampage, over 130 of them being from the theater. The screen faded out to black once more. Man, who that was a that was a drop right there. A uh, fucking legendary smile, dog. Again, referencing something else that is popular. Um, not to you know describe your own grin, but to mention this other grin, which also wasn't described well. But that's another story. The point is, it's it's a shallow attempt at borrowing from someone else without adding anything or doing anything really. I was glad this maniac was finally caught, but I couldn't help but feel sorrow for those who had lost their families and lives in her rampage. Motherfucker, it is a cartoon. A fictional car- bootleg cartoon. Uh, seemingly animated extremely well for some reason. The screen, uh, the black, the, mm, the black screen lasted for about a minute. I hoped it was finally over. Yeah, you're just sitting there watching a black screen for a minute? It wasn't. The screen faded back. To what looked like a courtroom. Months had passed since the rampage and Fluttershy pled guilty. Did I say Pinkie Pie earlier? Because I meant to say Fluttershy. I think I keep confusing it because of cupcakes. I keep picturing Pinkie Pie doing it. Anyway, Fluttershy had pled guilty for murder. She was now in court for sentencing and for final comments before she was to go uh, to prison for life. The first pony to go up on the podium was Princess Luna. I was glad to see one of Equestria's rulers, since they are my favorite ponies. Ugh. Man, I don't like all this murder and stuff, and I don't like the direction that the show has taken, but at least there's there's my favorite pony. Um, Fluttershy, why? Uh, Luna asked on the stand. I don't know why you would do something like this. It seems so out of character for you. I have no idea what would motivate you to do something like this. She started to cry. I bet you were abused by your family, perhaps molested by your father. You had a horrible childhood. Uh, the ones you used to call friends turned on you and started letting their flaws, uh, nature control you. Control themselves? Letting their flawed natures control themselves. I was appalled when I learned that Twilight Sparkle had done... I was appalled when I learned what Twilight Sparkle had done to Spike these past few years, taking advantage of a child. Oh, okay. So that's what the angle they're going with, is that Spike is a baby, and that uh, Twilight Sparkle has always been looking after uh, Sp- uh, Spike, so that means that it's child abuse. I was a- astonished that Apple Bloom never managed to report the abuse she faced at the hands of her family. But why did you kill the rest of them? Why did you murder their victims of these monsters with them? Why? Her sobbing started to get out of control. She gained her composure after a while. Perhaps a lifetime in prison will help you get rid of the hate in your heart. Okay, so this is a revelation here um, that Apple Bloom was abused by the Apple family? What? Okay, all right. So... I think that they're trying to, like, paint serial killers, um, th- these, like, mass shooters and stuff, as anti-heroes that are also racist. I don't... This is so confusing. Um, you know, just try... It, it feels like it's supposed to be some sort of political screed, like, some... Like, there's the, the social stuff and politics and all that kind of stuff, but... uh the the message that they're putting forward is really confusing. It's like it's okay to go on mass shootings, but or I don't know. I really don't know, guys. What are you getting out of this? Because I'm just confused. Whoa! Is Luna acknowledging the idea that Fluttershy was abused as a filly? I thought that was just an urban legend, but now I wasn't so sure. Then again, this clearly was not authentic. Yes, it's not authentic. So why would you? Uh, why would you think this is? canonical in any fashion. Princess Luna got off the stand. Now it was Fluttershy's turn to speak her last lines. This would turn out to be the most disturbing portion of the already demonic episode. I hope you're all ready to get down with the sickness, because we're about to get extremely disturbed according to the story. Fluttershy went up to the stand. She was in her prison outfit, ready to speak. The first thing she did was remove her prison jacket. What she wore underneath disturbed me beyond all belief. I bet it did. She wore herself a white 
t-shirt and it bore the word killer written sloppily with black marker. This was getting very familiar to me. But what she said for her last statement really shocked me. This is a message to the families of my victims. The hoof that pulled that trigger that killed your family now clops to their dead, to, to their memory. Fuck all of you, she said in another different voice, resembling that of another male teenager. I recognized that quote from something on the news. It was the sentencing for T.J. Lane, the perpetrator of the Chardon High School shooting. He wore the exact same, uh, the exact, the same exact t-shirt I saw Fluttershy wearing and said almost the exact, say, uh, the exact thing, except Fluttershy's speech was ponified. However, it sounded like the voice of TJ Lane himself. How could he have recorded this line for a kid's show? Yeah, that's a good question. I could, it couldn't get any worse, I thought. That was until Fluttershy pulled out a handgun from her pocket where she, where did she get this? The ponies in the courtroom fled the scene for fear of their lies, except for the police. They ran for her, but, uh, but before they could reach her, she pulled the, put the barrel in her mouth and pulled the trigger. Why do you know what this school shooter's voice sounded like? Is a sensible question, I think. Where did the gun come from? And, uh, uh. Man, there's there's just so much dumb to unpack that it's really frustrating. <laughs> the bullet exited down to the top of her head, and she died immediately. Blood and brain matter poured from her mouth in a similar manner to that of the infamous Bud Dreyer suicide. Random bursts of static shock, uh, static overtook the screen, and she bled out. After flickering on and off for a while, the screen was overtook with an extremely loud static. It hopped. It stopped. Hopped? Why are you reading, Brandon? It stopped suddenly, and I saw the most disturbing image in my lifetime. It was a picture of Fluttershy bleeding out. Her eyes were missing, and her sockets were left to bleed. That image literally made me wet myself. I kept watching. Not th this person's really into piss play. Um, not judging, just saying. I kept watching, not thinking it would get any worse. However, I was wrong. The song of healing started playing backwards, similar to the story of Ben Drown. The clip changed to another disturbing video. <laughs> it was zoomed in automatically. All I saw was what looked like Fluttershy performing fellatio on someone. Why is the story doing these things? As the video zo zoomed out automatically. Of course it did. Why wouldn't it zoom out automatically? It's... Uh, uh, I saw that that someone was pleasuring. She was pleasuring was no n <laughs> no one else but the th infamous T.J. Lane, the Chardon shooter. You just mentioned who he was. He was clearly enjoying it. It zoomed out even more, and I could see that someone was per uh, penetrating Fluttershy on the other end. <laughs> I was so sick by this. Uh, I just wanted it to be over. It zoomed out to show the face of who was penetrating Fluttershy. Yeah, get on with it. Oh, I misread there for a second. I thought it said Avril Lavigne. Just Fuda Avril Lavigne. Trans Avril, Avril Lavigne. It was none other than Ad and the evil Adam Lanza, the Sandy Hook murderer. Fluttershy was enjoying both ends of being fooled with, but I was sick to my stomach after ten minutes of watching... <laughs> This horrible sex act. The two mesmerators came, and their bodily fluids uh, covered the screen until it was all white. Come wipe. Um, the screen faded to black, and it stayed there for 30 seconds. Oh, my God. Was this some sick joke? Who made this? Randy Stare. Um, I wanted to find who made this video and slit their throats. I thought the video was over, but I was dead wrong. Once again, the screen suddenly flashed in multiple colors. It was the most evil image I ever, uh, I had seen. It was Adam Lanza once more, but he had no eyes. It was only bleeding sockets of 
uh, and only bleeding sockets and blood running down his mouth. The image flashed over and over in different colors while, at the same time, loud, blood-curdling screams filled the room. At this point, I didn't, it didn't even sound like it was coming from my computer, but rather surrounded me all around the room. <clears throat> Ugh, sorry. I covered my ears and fell over. From there on, everything went to black. Then, uh, here we have down in the corner a picture labeled Lanza.jpg, which is as described with black blood and blah. Okay, so, bearing this in mind, um, this is going to sound obvious, but I'm going to put this out there. Restraint is very important when you're writing a, a creepy story like this. Um, even if your story is going to be brutal and shocking, even then, restraint will do you a whole lot of good, because if you're grounding something, very small things can be impactful. You know, there, there's a horror movie called Audition that's an, ex an example of this. Um, at one point, a single limb is being amputated, but that in upon itself is so gut-wrenchingly horrific because of the detail and the realism and everything that was established up until that point to show you why, that, that to establish that it's the same world that you're living in. And then you get that empathy and that and that sympathy and, and you feel that that person's body is your body and it's much more horrifying. Here, it's just blood and guts and gore and pony sex. <laughs> it's just all over the place. Um, also, this story lacks cons not, uh, not consistency, um, that I guess, but it lacks concentration. It lacks focus. What is the story supposed to be about? Um, it's, it's just all over the place. It, it could focus up on one or two things and, and be much more beneficial to it. The aftermath. I woke up three hours later in the emergency room at the Clearfield Hospital. My parents were standing by my bedside. What happened? I asked my mother rather groggily. I came home and saw you passed out on your bedroom floor. I was worried I would lose you, she sobbed. The doctor said you had a grand moss seizure. My father said, Does this mean I'm epileptic? I asked. The doctors told us that you had a stress seizure, apparently triggered by some sort of psychological trauma, my father said. They call, uh, they are called psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, or P, <laughs> P, E, N, S, or penis for short. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Why would they know that? Why would they know what you passed down from? Like, I, I, I'm fairly certain they would be able to do brain scans to uh, figure out that you had a grand mal seizure, but why would they assume all of the psychological stuff that, that it's a stress seizure? Is that even a thing that they would be able to determine? I don't think so. I highly doubt that. Uh, did something happen to you while we while you were home alone? My mother asked. What was on your computer screen when you found me? I asked, remembering the DVD. Oh, he's not ready to come out of the stable yet. When I called the ambulance, I saw a message on the computer screen. I was too worried about uh, about you, but I took a look. Anyway, it said something to the effect of, This isn't over, my mother uh, My mother replied. What? What's this about? Something happened to my computer, I said. I found a movie at Goodwill and played it on my laptop, but uh, it played very disturbing imagery that wasn't uh, supposed to be there. I think I bought a pirated film. My parents and <laughs> By a pirated film, receive a stress-induced, psychogenic, non-epileptic seizure. Okay. My parents embraced me, glad I was safe. The doctors recommended uh, that I be kept home from school for, uh, the next day. This would end up saving my life. Oh my god, is there going to be a real-life school shooting after this? So we're finally coming back around to the real world, outside of this pony DVD, and there was the gun in the snow, at the beginning of the story. Maybe this is going to loop around and be about that again, but this is ridiculous. Um, my parents got a call the next day from my high school. There had been a school shooting that left three students dead, including the shooter who killed herself. I knew this girl. She was in my grade. She was a beautiful blonde and had those beautiful blue eyes. Okay, like, pon like Fluttershy, Pony Shy. <laughs> She never talked with anyone and just blended in most of the time. I never n knew she had it in her to kill people. Um, the news report stated that she had been raped 
by a couple of male students about a year ago and finally decided, decided to take her revenge on the guys. I knew the guys. They were a bunch of football stars. Oh, of course they are. Bunch of Chad football stars raping the women. You know, again, these are serious things and I would either expect this story to try and intentionally be funny to trivialize this stuff or at the other end of the spectrum, uh, deal with these things in a very real world manner that would make us feel for this. Like this, this character was raped and I don't feel anything about it. You know, that's not how you're supposed to feel. When you're here, when you hear that, you're supposed to have basic human empathy, but because this is fictional and talking about ponies, I just don't have that, that, that feeling. Um, I don't care about these fictional characters and they're not giving me that illusion that these are real people that I should care about, you know? Um, and again, the, the, the whole thing of like painting football stars that way, I don't like that. Um, I could not stand them. They were womanizers and troublemakers, but the school ignored them since they were valuable assets to our team. The news also reported a pending investigation into her family life with recent allegations by her older sister that her father had sexually abused her since kindergarten. I don't think people realize how little a kindergartner is until you're around kindergartners. Um, certainly there are people out there like who are extremely fucked in the head that would find that attractive, but uh, that's, that's, <laughs> I don't think that the, the author understands what they're conveying there. How small a, a kindergartner is a baby. Okay. Like is a baby. Um, a press conference was held where it will, where it was announced that the shooter wore a bulletproof vest and carried many knives, handguns, and a machine gun. What is a machine gun? Please explain story. What you mean by machine gun? Was it an assault rifle 15? What was it? Please. Um, it was also found that she was carrying a small plastic figure of Fluttershy, of course. When they searched her house, they had found a large amount of My Little Pony fan art. Um, art which, when shown to the press, looked very authentic as if Lauren Faust drew it, drew them herself. <laughs> uh, no comment. Um, they also found on her computer a series of flash animations she made of My Little Pony animations that could not have been shown on TV due to the graphic nature of the clips she made. They did not disclose the content, but they stated that the videos she made were extremely violent. They had also found that she had shrines hidden in her room devoted to school shooters, including Eric Harris, Dylan Claybold, TJ Lane, uh, Sui, uh, Sung Hui Cho, uh, and of course, the most recent case, Adam Lanza. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So I think we know where this is going. This show, th th these animations were made by, um, this, this girl who shot up the school. Um, seemingly she's just really good at that. Now, real life, there was a person named Randy Stair, also known online by the pseudonym Andrew Blaze, was a mentally ill American who was raised in Dallas, Pennsylvania. He murdered three of his co-workers at a local Weiss supermarket and was shortly after thereafter killed himself. After the shooting, it was discovered that Stair had left a big social media footprint, in, especially on YouTube. He was most notably obsessed with the character Ember from the Nickelodeon cartoon Danny Phantom and even went as far as to make a fictional group of girls based on the Ember Ghost Squad. Though Stair did not commit uh, a school shooting, he idolized the Columbine uh, shooters. Um, he, um, or or she, it's, it's kind of unclear because they, you know, transgender, allegedly, this person was. Um, so this, this person who did the shooting made a giant series of animations saying uh, called Ember Ghost Squad where this fictional character goes and shoots up a school and then Randy Stair goes and does it in real life. This happened uh, in 2017. Now, looking at the comments in this story, oh my god, this story predicted this August 2013 or getting comments. So this story predates, predicted the rise of Randy Stare. Holy shit. Um, this person predicted the idea of like animating something, putting it out into the world, and then doing it in real life. Like 
do like having cartoons do murders and then actually do the murders holy fuck oh my god i am mind blown uh nobody at her school knew how disturbed she really was nobody and oh my god this person also randy stare looked up to the columbine tuners this person looked up to the columbine tuners what the fuck what the fuck um nobody in her school knew how disturbed she really was nobody um knew that she would be the next school shooter now i wonder did she make that film i saw i wonder if she made that film and intentionally put it at the goodwill store in town so a local would see it and hear her cries for help she uh could she have been asking for help or was it something more sinister i have since burned the dvd i did not want to victimize myself even more than i already have by sending it to the police I think this person means that they literally burnt the DVD, not that they made another copy of it. Um, that's confusing. My parents never found out about what was really on the DVD, and they still do not know about my addiction to My Little Pony. Perhaps someday I will not be such a bitch and come out of the stable. I will tell them about being a brony, maybe even the uh, whole school, but for now, I have finals to study for. I should put the past behind me. You just were, you know, indicted in a fucking school shooting and you're, you know, involved tangentially in a school shooting and you're just like, eh, I gotta study. What the fuck? No, you would be traumatized. What the fuck are you talking about? Um, if anyone you know has major problems <laughs> or is a brony, if anyone you know has major problems or you fear they may do something like this, please get them some help immediately so that they can prevent more Sandy Hooks or Columbines. Okay, so that's the, the, the screed of this is people need, it, it, the, we need to reach these people earlier. That way they don't go on these school shootings. Well, this story did not tell us that in a very effective way. Um, if that is you, no, uh, know that nobody is unloved. There is always someone that loves you. Uh, weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalms 35. Okay. Okay. Bearing all of that in mind, <laughs> um, that, that like sentimental uplifting ending has nothing to do with the rest of the story. This story is a complete mind fuck. I need to see some of these comments. Uh, 7.5 out of 10, um, as of, okay, the date. We got this comment, what the fuck, by Kierman. Yeah, okay, what the fuck, indeed. Uh, all the other kids with the pumped up kicks, you better run, you better run faster than my bullet. Uh, you mean all the other fillies with the pumped up kicks, with the pumped up hooves, uh, with the pumped up horseshoes. Uh, someone reading the story, uh, seemingly unironically, okay. Man, narration stuff is, toxic wow i am left speechless says uh pvz brony god and then we have a response past the bleach from chemical cats okay well um uh, oh, the good w the god will the god will dvd <laughs> definitely not a cry for help rip all that died in the shooting this person thinks that this apparently happened which you kind of did with randy stare uh clears throat holy this was awesome six 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 out of ten <laughs> I don't know if that was uh if if that was sardonic, ironic, or whatever. Um, picture the pictures made me laugh so hard my neighbors could hear me. Well, W. Qual, who has a picture of Sonic, <laughs> uh, I agree with you. Yes. Uh, no comment. It's awkward as my profile picture is of Fluttershy. Says Rosetta Stone. O nine. Yes. Uh, it is awkward. Man. Uh, this is this is weird. He Heavy on Fire has this to say, boring and long, also subject is overused. Yes, well, I think we're going to end it on that. That was a genuine mind fuck. I, I am amazed that that story unintentionally predicted the existence of Randy Stare, or maybe it was written by Randy Stare. I don't know who wrote it, but man, um, whew, I need to decompress. Uh, um, I, I guess we're going, I guess we're going to have to just break here.
Now, if you enjoyed that, consider helping out the community and supporting my channel. You can support the community by conversing in the comments below, going to twospooky.com, that's T-O-O -O spooky.com for more original horror stories, and looking into the hyper-realist here on YouTube, a podcast where writer Slime Beast, musician Abysme, and myself discuss what is killing creepypasta today. Thank you so much for your time, and now on to our sponsor at this non-moment in time. Headlight Fluid. Headlight Fluid. Not available at AutoZone or other fine automobile stores.